Hi, so for my final project on my body politic, I decided to do a video essay since you said we could do different variations off the final essay, and I didn't feel like writing another essay, final essay, so it's going to be a video essay. Uh, so I'm going to start with my summary of the book and main message and themes. So this book is by Simi Linton, and it is her personal memoir of her life and commentary on disability as a social construct as it evolves through her life. The book begins in 1971 when Linton was a temporarily able-bodied individual. She was a hippie and a college dropout that was hitchhiking her way to DC with her husband and her best friend to protest a march against the Vietnam War. Unfortunately, she was in a tragic car crash that ended her husband and her best friend's lives and left her with a spinal cord injury, making her paraplegic from the waist down. And then the book proceeds to then chronicle the next year of her life when she was hospitalized, surgeries, and then eventually when she would grow into a rehabilitation center. And it's here in the rehabilitation center that she realized how passi passive a patient's voice is, and she got very into patient advocacy, where she saw all the ways that she didn't have a voice or didn't have a say in her own treatment, that she was like, well, this isn't fair, this isn't right, all patients deserve their say in their voice and she kind of got her first taste if you will of patient advocacy there when she began to push for sexual education because many of their doctors were attending these seminars and saying they were these well-rounded well well equipped doctors for attending all these seminars on different topics including sexual education but then when their patients would ask for sexual education they would be like oh we're uncomfortable telling you about it so we're not going to which kind of sounded pointless like why attend all of these um you know, uh, seminars if you won't even share that information with your patients, and if your patients want it, they deserve it. If that information is available, they deserve the rights to all the information. And then it proceeded to chronicle her time in New York when she first got back to her apartment and having a homemade and adjusting to life and basically just learning what it's like to now be using a wheelchair and not being fully physically, physically able-bodied. And, um, in 1975, she went to live in Berkeley, California, which in general is a lot more progressive for being accessible. So she had that stark difference of New York that didn't have as much of a regard for accessibility and Berkeley, California, which has a lot of regard for it. And she saw the Center for Independent Living, which was run by uh, physically disabled individuals themselves to assist other disabled individuals for finding ways of living independently, which kind of helped her see, you know, kind of like that, you know, obviously there's a life and there's still careers and she still has a joyous life to lead and that she has all these possibilities. So she started to get motivated and began taking classes at Barnard College to develop her own opinion on disability beliefs. And um, she eventually got her degree and would later go on to be a disability rights activist and just a women's rights activist and would... Um, co-organize the National Coalition of Sexuality and Disability because that was a big thing that she was an advocate for and a big pusher is that everyone deserves this information and everyone deserves to know what they are and aren't capable of and if the doctors are uncomfortable that's on them if the patients want to know they have the right to know um and then it would go on to also talk about her marrying her husband Rufus her second husband Rufus and just general commentary on the silence surrounding disability and questions of access and I think the main themes and the main takeaways that I take from this book is just always asking why and always pushing for what you believe is right, where obviously a lot of other patients were displeased with the lack of sexual education, but Simi was always very active and was like, I don't understand why, if we want this and you know it, why won't you educate us? And I think that there is a lot to be said about her dedication and just the main theme of always asking why and always pushing for what you believe is right and pushing for full accessibility, which I always liked. And then on page three, it says, describe an experience or person that she encountered that stood out to you. And I think an experience that, I think I referenced this in a different project, but an experience of hers that stood out to me was her talking about how Rufus made her a lot more outdoorsy. And I think this stood out to me because I, I personally identify as a very outdoorsy individual and I spend a lot of time outside. I'm a biology and environmental science major and I think it made me really think about my definition of an outdoorsy person. I think in my mind, when I think of an outdoorsy person, I would think about someone who is very physically able body because my idea of outdoorsy is cave dwelling and rock climbing and doing um, things where you need full mobility of your legs and arms. So I would often um, 
a huge thing is I would often say to like others who are like that that you like in my opinion that other people are not physically able to see this nature and appreciate nature if they're not able to climb the way I can or get into small spaces the way I can um so um I think it really made me think about you know everyone deserves the right to enjoy nature and nature can be deserved enjoyed in a wide variety of ways that doesn't involve crawling into small spaces um <laughs> and climbing things and I think that's really important for my future career, which kind of a little bit leaders on into the next plot, is I plan on going into biology and environmental science. I think it's really important in general with conservation education where you're not going to get people to care about conservation if they don't care about nature. And if you create a group of individuals that basically feel as though like they can't enjoy nature because nature, we don't have things set up for them to, it, to be accessible for them, like they're not going to care about conservation. So I think it's really important to have things, you know, trails that are accessible because I've seen a lot of different kinds of trails, you know, I've seen trails where you could easily push a wheelchair over, or, like have a lot of benches along the way for someone to like stop and rest and I've seen, um, trails that are basically rocks and com completely inaccessible. So there's a lot that you could do to still make things enjoyable for others. Um, I've seen trails that are paved straight up. So there is a lot of different things we could be doing to try to make things more accessible so more people can truly enjoy nature because I think that nature is a beautiful thing and that it cleanses the body and soul and that everyone deserves to have it because it's really good for your mental health and just good for your mind to be a kind of away from the city and away from things and just be hear the birds and such um but that being said I do think in my specific job which I tend to go plan to go into which is more environmental research I do think it tends to be more physically able body individual and I don't know if that's something that is necessarily changeable due to the nature of the job itself where like in my research lab we even though it is a lab and during the semester we're doing a lot of just lab bench work in the summer we go out and we camp out in the forests and are collecting data and we're hiking with 20 pounds of weight on our back through off trail so there are some things that you just simply like if you're going 10 several miles in off trail you there's only so much you can do where you kind of have to the ability to use a wheelchair would be very limited there and certain other things if you're not able to carry that amount of weight that you would need to carry and walk the amount we would need to walk um but I think it's important to think about and to always keep in your back pocket because I don't know where my future will hold where if I go into something that's more conservation related or more into say landscaping of actually building public spaces thinking about how we can make them the most accessibly possible I think is really beneficial and in general I think even if you don't know how exactly this class would benefit your future, I think this class is very beneficial where I think what I've learned in this class, I will always keep in my back pocket as like, if I'm ever put in that situation in my future, I now know things, how to better suit things to try to make things more accessible, or at least I know how to ask the right questions that we could then like bring in a specialist and be like, oh, if we're building this park space or doing this thing, that or the other, how can we make it the most accessible for everyone? and not just those physically temporarily able-bodied and um I also just think that this class is really beneficial and I very enjoyed it because I think it just puts everyone in a different perspective and that's a big issue with disability being a social construct is if you're taught a certain way from childhood if you're never untaught that you're going to keep thinking that and then you're going to pass that on to your children as well so I think that this course is very beneficial for just anyone just because even if you're not in a position where you can be enacting this radical change just by slowly changing how society views it that is how we radically change it is just by slowly getting the entire population kind of to be able to see more clearly what the true truth is behind disability and debunking all the myths behind disability so I would definitely recommend this course and honestly I flat out think that this could be just a required course with an intercultural perspective credit is that I think it's just a very beneficial course to open a lot of people's eyes and that's how you change society is you just get these regular people that maybe have no intent of making radical change but just explaining and debunking these myths to them and then that they could pass it on to their future generations and then slowly you will get a society that refuses to view things disability as a by the medical model and view it as the fact that it is a social construct and that anyone that does have the ability to be changing certain spaces to be making them more accessible so um 
I definitely hope that I'm in a position when I'm older where I can be helping making some environmental things more accessible because the environment is a big deal to me and I've always loved nature and being outside. So I hope to do that when I'm older and in general, I really enjoyed reading the book and in general I've really enjoyed this class and I hope that it continues to enlighten a lot of other people in many different fields and that by people of many different diverse majors taking this class that we will slowly enact change in all fields over time and I hope that more people take this in the future that Miami makes it required that like all freshmen or something take it. I would be very supportive of that but yeah. Thank you for the great semester. Um, I hope you have a lovely holidays and winter break.